This is the second companion video for exercise six of architectural simulations. Remember, there are two points to these videos. One is to give you a resource while you're working on the assignment. The second is that you need to watch these before class. Take note of some questions because I go through this stuff quickly so that we can and then ask me the questions during class so that we can have a discussion rather than a lecture. So in the first video this week, I talked about a stair core script that we gave you that uses code inputs. In this video, we'll talk about a cistern modeler that uses living building challenge uh, criteria as the baseline. So let's go over that briefly and we can talk about it more in class. Remember that in this course, every simulation we do is going to be linked to some benchmark some quantitative benchmark because that will tell us whether or not we are succeeding. We set a benchmark and then we uh, simulate toward it or we design toward it. So, for example, for daylighting, we chose lead um, as uh, the daylighting criteria in lead. We didn't really talk much about lead, so I just want to remind you, or if you haven't checked into it, that this, uh, the full lead manual is on Canvas. Uh, and it's essentially a, a series of criteria that you can uh, uh, choose to engage with to get points. But the overarching idea is to develop a design of a building that will perform at a certain level of sustainability. Um, but notice here, we have uh, rainwater management in LEED, so we could have used LEED for this. I, I decided uh, to use the Living Building Challenge just, and we're not going to get into depth in it, but just to uh, remind us that there's a lot of these certifications out there. You may be asked to use them by different clients, or there may be a requirement in terms of the jurisdiction you're in to use something, or you may just find one you like that helps you design better. Uh, the Living Building Challenge has sections like LEED, uh, in, but they call them pedals. Uh, so these uh, headings are pedals uh, toward a flower that's the Living Building Challenge, um, regenerative, you know, hyper-sustainable uh, building design and from their perspective what we're um, doing is we're, we're doing the water pedal um, and to the highest level which is net positive water it's a really simple concept though and we're not going to so it's, we don't have to get into a lot of depth um, basically the idea is that we want to collect more water on site than we will use so we won't take anything out of the aquifer and we'll have extra water that we can use for something else um, so it's actually a um, you know, rather than using water, we're, we're generating water for use. So how would we go about simulating um, or, or designing uh, a workflow in Grasshopper that would accomplish this? Um, so remember, Grasshopper is a visual coding language that's linked to Rhino. Um, we'll have geometry either that we draw in Rhino and control in Grasshopper, or we will generate um, and or we'll generate geometry in Grasshopper that we then bake into Rhino. Uh, what are the components of this script that I've, or that, you know, what do we need to know in order to, to um, design a system that will collect more water than we need? Well, first we need to know how much uh, precipitation is falling on our site. So that's this first section, and we'll have to um, access that data somewhere. We'll talk about that. Then uh, we need to know how much um, water we can collect from this precipitation based on some surface. So we'll either use the roof uh, of a building or you can use the whole site or whatever, but we need to know how much water we have. Then we have to know how much we could collect given a surface that we've got. Then we can design a cistern that will collect that water and we can uh, design one of a size that, that will work in our design, we think. Um, then we need to know how much water we um, estimate that our building will use. So that's this section. And finally, we determine then how many cisterns we need of the size we want to design or to use or to buy um, that will generate uh, net positive water. In other words, we'll have more collected than we use. All right, so how do we go about creating this script? Um, what I did is I, I had not done this before. I mean, I, I had not tried to model rain catchment in Grasshopper. So the first thing I did was uh, check and see uh, what was out there. And, and the reason I'm telling you this is because that's the way you should be thinking about Grasshopper. Grasshopper is, I mean, you know, all these uh, tool sets up here are uh, 
most of these are free that um, are available uh, and uh, often very powerful. Um, and they've been made available for free by people who have developed um, uh, scripts in Grasshopper. So I assumed, yeah, somebody's probably already done this. I went and did a little bit of searching on the internet, um, found this uh, thread that, you know, often they're multi-year threads um, where somebody was trying to solve this problem. Uh, the Ladybug folks got involved. Ladybug is, is a, um, a set of tools in, oops, wrong one. Sorry. Jumping around here, but, I, you know, um, so this is Ladybug. Uh, so these people were saying, yeah, actually, this is a good tool. We, we should um, bring it into uh, because the, the person who was developing this um, in the thread was using um, uh, components from, from Ladybug. Anyway, so the point is that I followed this uh, to the end, saw what they were doing and took what I could use from it and downloaded it. And so that became the basis for my um, this first section of precipitation. So let's look at it. Um, remember, too, that in Grasshopper, what I am doing is uh, I could actually make all of this, this, this whole script just be a bunch of inputs uh, and then outputs without seeing any of the guts of, of the core of the, of the script. Um, or we could have a much more complicated script here visually because there's a lot more going on. What I choose to do is uh, put some things in clusters so that I can keep this very organized, but that you can still see the flow. And anytime you want to understand more about what's going on, you can click on a cluster. So, um, so if I click, I know this is a cluster. If I click on it, this is the cluster I made. Basically, um, we have an EPW map that uh, I'll show you that we access. We download the URL. I'm sorry, we um, we download a uh, from the URL. We download a zip folder um, that has the climate file in it. Then this outputs, I'm going to put in a panel here. This is a monthly, um, you know, you'll see it's 1 through 12. So this is uh, every month, the average uh, for that month of rain and whatever uh, climate I'm in right now. So what I did here then was I took a, a component that is a mass addition. So I brought in all of these and added them together to get an annual total. So now I can take out the monthly and put it in a chart and I can now have an annual total that I can express in feet or in inches. Uh, and that's, so that's what I've done here. I go back. So um, here's my chart and here is um, the output in inches. And then I took it in feet down to here. Okay, so that's the guts of it, but let's see how it works. So I'm going to, and you can just go through this. Um, I've got these in order. Um, it's very well organized, I think. So um, even if you don't want to dig into the, the, the guts of this, which I hope you will, you don't have to. Uh, I'm going to first choose a climate. So I'm going to select this. What that did, you can't see it because I have two screens, is it opened up this climate map, which you've seen before. I provided it for you um, in a different assignment. Um, so I would go in and find climate data for some place that I wanted to be. You're probably going to be in New York. I select it and I copy the URL. Then I come and paste that URL here. So I'm now in number two, pasting link. You see now this is a different uh, climate set. I say OK. Uh, and now I click to run it. And you see we have a different output here. So what have I done? I have gone and uh, accessed climate data, run it through this component. And now I, I just added this um, as a, um, a quick summary of the monthly output. So we're starting in January, we go to December. Um, and so, you know, we can see that sort of, you know, in the summer we have more rain, um, much less in the winter. Uh, we have 45 inches total. So this, this might help us if we were... Um, wanting to decide, um, well, I won't even get into it because I don't want to get too detailed, but just, you know, it's, it's good information to have. Um, okay, so we now have the, uh, for this, for whatever, wherever that was, I just, where is it? It's in uh, um, Arkansas. 
uh, uh, Jonesboro, Arkansas at the airport. We have 45 inches. Here's the, the monthly outputs. So um, now what do we want to do with that information? We want to figure out how much water we can collect. So let's go look at that. Let's go look at how I did that. I selected um, a surface over here. I decided to select the roof. So um, I put this roof um, into this. Uh, uh, I selected this to be the collection area. Um, once I've selected that, um, it will, I will output area into this component, which is bringing in feet per year. So let's look at this cluster. So I'm saying cubic feet, which is the roof area. So let's just make sure we understand this. Um, if I have a roof or just any kind of surface, right? And so I've got a length and a width. And then I say, okay, it's going to rain this many inches. And this is in inches per year or per whatever time period. Now I have a volume. Sorry for the, this is uh, just with my mouse. It's not very good. Now I have a volume um, of, let me turn that off. Um, a volume of water. So that's this cubic feet, the roof area and annual precipitation, both in feet. Then uh, I decided that I wanted to have a con control over how much of the year I wanted to collect in one cistern. Because, you know, if I did a full year, it might be a huge cistern. Maybe I don't want that. So I'm saying the number of months divided by 12 is going to be the percentage, the fraction of the year that I'm going to store. Uh, of the potential that I that I can. So from here, I'm going to get a percentage of this um, cubic feet. And I'm actually going to output that to the next section down here. But then I converted this into gallons. So this is right here, a conversion to gallons from cubic feet. Um, I want it to be a thousand gallons. So I um, divided it by a thousand and I rounded it with this component. So now I have stored water rounded to um, I'm not sure what I rounded it to. We'll see. Um, and so this is kilogallons. So I did to I, so I did to thousands of gallons. Um, and so I have the 184 kilogallons here from this is my again my surface over here. And let's just look at that again. Um, you know this is the surface here. All right. Let me um, preview it. There you can see I just previewed it. I turned that on. I'm gonna turn it back off. Um, I took its area. I chose five months, right? Um, so let me actually make this larger. Um, if I want it to be six months, I get more uh, collection. Totally makes sense, right? I'm gonna leave it at five months. I don't know why, just because that's where I had it. Okay, so now I know um, how much water I can collect um, on that my roof in five months. Okay, so what I do, what do I do now? I need to. I want to. Um, design a cistern that will hold this water. Uh, let's remind ourselves, so the uh, formula for a the volume of a cylinder, because I just decided to make these cylinders, so that's very common in cisterns, is pi r squared h. So I need, I you know, pi is a constant. I either need to know the height or the radius. Um, if, I, if I know the volume and I know the radius or the height, I can um, design a cistern. So what I decided to do, let me go back to this, was I decided to set a height that I wanted. And so this is variable. I can change it, of course. Um, and then so, so then now I have that as an input into my radius calculation and my volume calculation. So um, let's look at this again. Here's the cluster that I made. So I'm bringing in the volume of rain that I'm collecting. Let's go back again and remind ourselves of that. So that's coming from here. This is the volume coming into this. Um, I have my cistern height that I brought in and pi is a constant. I am, uh, creating this equation here. So what I did is I rearranged, right? So now I'm, I'm saying I'm, I'm solving for R. So my radius is going to equal volume divided by pi times height, uh, to the square root of it. So here's my pi, here's my height. Those are multiplied together like here. Um, I divide 
volume by that, and then I take the square root. So that is this. Therefore, I have um, my radius coming out here. I rounded it, so that's that's going to be my output because I'm always rounding because I don't. This is pretty approximate. I don't want to have a bunch of decimal points. And then I'm going to also send that radius to actually uh, generate the geometry. So let's go look at that. Here's here's the thing we were just looking at. That's the radius. Um, and so this component, let me right click on that, say help, is uh, a, a component for generating a cylinder um, in Rhino from Grasshopper. So I'm saying, okay, okay, Rhino, um, generate a cylinder, but what size is that cylinder? So let me, uh, let's click on this. Oops, I'm sorry. Well, essentially, this component is just that equation that we had in here, right? Um, and that's just it's just baked into uh, Rhino. So I'm bringing in the radius from here and the length from there, and then that, that equation's inside of there. Then what's this B? This is, and actually, just look, you can see here, the cylinder radius, cylinder height. B is a base plane. So if I come back over here, let me turn on my... Uh, my grid. So that's my base plane. Is that the grid? And my origin is going to be right here. At, that's where the if the, the axes are on. This is where the cylinders are going to uh, be built. So coming back to here. Um, now I'm going to generate this volume. So we just we saw that's just a math math using our inputs. Uh, I'll I'll describe this in a second. So if I now um, preview, so I'm going to right click and preview this, you'll see that I have a volume here. So that's come, this volume is coming from here, which is coming from um, the calculations I did in here. Then if I, I, I there's a, a component for capping the volume, so I'm going to preview that. So there's my cistern designed and uh, set into Rhino. It's not baked yet. Um, What's this 0.9 thing? Well, the idea is I'm trying to, to remind us as we do this stuff to try to be realistic. So this is a sort of a theoretical, we just got a cylinder over here. Um, you know, if, if you look at cisterns, first of all, there's going to be a wall thickness. So if, we're, if, so if we get dimensions in a spec book that says it gives us a height of a cylinder and a, and a diameter, um, it's probably to the outside. So the thickness of the walls will, will reduce the, the volume of that um, uh, that's that that cylinder that cistern also at the top it might you know uh, come in somewhat so the point is that if we we're looking up a cistern that, that we wanted to um, purchase we could uh, um, calibrate we because it's going to say it's a 500 gallon cistern or a thousand ten thousand gallon cistern or whatever we could then calibrate uh, we could use its actual height um, and then calibrate its um, what it what they're specifying is its uh, amount of gallons by adjusting this little variable. So all that's doing is coming into this and uh, you know this cluster here, and we're just saying I'm going to uh, take the amount uh, the volume of the cistern and adjust it by some fraction that I choose to create the actual volume that that cistern will collect. And then I'm going to convert it again into gallons. And so I'll, that's all I've done here. This, so we're now our output is kilogallons of actual capacity of our cistern. And so that's this value here. Okay, so now we have, de we have designed this cistern. We know how tall it is. Uh, we know its radius. And so we were able to design it in... Um, in Rhino, and we know how much water it's it's going to hold 165,000 gallons. Um, and you know, if I if I thought, well, you know, really, it's I think it's only going to be you know 80% of the volume will be able to hold it uh, will be able to hold water. I can adjust that here. Okay, next, we need to uh, figure out how much water our project is going to use. So, how would we do that? One way to do it is to um, look to the U.S. government. Um, there's, there's a uh, so, so for example, the U.S. Energy Information Administration um, 
well, actually, this, this is their website. I think it's the DOE that actually does this, this survey, the Department of Energy. But there is um, a survey of commercial building energy consumption. Um, so the commercial building energy consumption survey. Um, and what they do is they pick a bunch of buildings uh, from around the United States um, that are of different categories. And so they say, OK, we're going to compare libraries and schools and you know apartment buildings. And they generate a baseline. Um, energy use and also water use, other resources. So um, I just accessed, uh, looked around, and I accessed information from this survey. Um, and I came up with, uh, so um, I used the, the um, consumption per square foot per day in gallons for a variety of um, different building types. Now, by the way, you may notice this is for really big buildings. It may not really be accurate for the size that we're talking about. Like, for example, if you're an undergrad taking this class and you've got a 27,000 square foot project, you know, again, I'm not trying to be, uh, we're not actually building this. I'm not, so I'm not trying to be completely accurate. I'm just trying to set benchmarks that we're going to meet ourselves, um, you know, that we're going to meet. Okay, so I'm showing you this because that is that chart is where I got this drop down. So all of these, if I double click on this, these values are from that list. So let's just go look at one so you're so it's clear what I'm doing here. So let's say um, office and education are the same, 1,200 and one whether they're the same. Let's check. So education, we have 40 uh, gallons per square foot per day. I bet you that office is about the same. Yeah, 39.940s. That's why those are the same. And so what I did is I just took... Um, I said, OK, 40 gallons a day. And then I said times 30, because that was that's basically a month, 1,200. And so here's the 1,200 in this list. So that's how I got this number. Um, and so you can then use it. And you could go and you could add some if, you, if what your project is um, uh, uh, what describes the space that your, your, your project is not here. Then you, you could pick a different one. You could, you know, again, this is obviously very approximate because we're not, you know, your, your space might have four of these different, uh, um, four different types of um, uh, space use. Anyway, so I got a, a gallon per month for whatever type of building I'm uh, designing. Then I can adjust the floor area and, again, the number of months. So I'm right now matching that to the number of months I want to collect here. Don't have to do that, but um, that makes sense. I'm saying I, I basically I want a cistern. I'm going to design a cistern up here um, that will collect all the water on the for the project. Um, well, that yeah, that, that's maybe not going to collect all of it, but but we're we're uh, syncing these two. The cistern is going to catch five months worth of water falling on the roof, and this is five months of water usage. So they're they're tracking with one another. Then I, here's another cluster. I just brought those three variables, building type, floor area, and number of months. I did another uh, mass multiplication, multiplied those together, and converted um, it to thousands. So this is going to be thousands, so it's kilogallons of water usage. So that's this um, component. And again, okay, this you know starts to get a little bit messy in here. Um, this is why you should probably ask me questions in class, um, or just spend some time on your own really looking through this. Remember, like, so why are these? Why is, is this wire um, this color? Uh, because if you um, look at the, um, actually, it's at the inputs. If I say my wire display for any of these inputs, I can. The default is the thick. The faint is what I'm showing now, and you can also hide it. Um, so. What we're saying is here now, my, the water usage I'm predicting, uh, it, uh, in this case, for five months um, of, of our project. Um, and again, I, so I have 45,000 square feet because uh, I am thinking of it as this building, um, which was 15,000 square feet. And, I, and when I, like, for example, if you look back at the site context assignment, it's three stories tall, so it's about 45,000 square feet. That's where that number comes from. So five months would be um, a demand of 270,000 gallons. Um, if I 
the total used is going to be then the amount I collect. So that this is coming from here into here, capacity, and the amount that I'm using is here. And this is simply subtraction. So I'm subtracting the amount I'm using from the amount I'm collecting, and I get the total used, 105 gallons. So that's a 61% reduction um, from, uh, in other words, 100% would be if I didn't have any rain catchment. So I'm at, I've reduced it 39%. How do I know that? Um, I just came in here and um, divided the capacity by the uh, demand, get a percentage. Um, this component, by the way, just um, allows me to uh, have this specific decimal layout. You wouldn't need to have that. I just wanted to make this neat. Um, okay, so what are we saying here? We're saying that this cistern that we designed um, is uh, collecting like 39%, no, I, I'm sorry, 61% of the water we need. So then we're going to need two of them. And all we're doing here is we're saying if you take the reciprocal of that percentage, you'll get a number. And that's going to be the number of cisterns. If that's confusing to you, just think about it for a minute. I don't want to go through all this, you know, like in super detail. Um, but all I'm saying is here that I, I got, um, we're collecting 61% of the water we need. Um, that, gener that through this code says that we need two cisterns. Um, and then I'm, this, this is actually generating the geometry through a linear array. So if I now... I'm going to turn off this here. Let me go back to this. Yeah, I'm going to turn off this preview and this preview. So now we don't have any preview here. And then I'm going to um, show this. And now there's our two cisterns. So um, this is just Again, uh, it's it's a linear array tool. I can show you in class how it works. Basically, you just say where you're starting. When I said it was over here at the, um, let me turn that back on, uh, at the origin, and then you have to tell it which direction you want it to go, and you can create this. Uh, but you won't need to do that because you have the script here. I'm just showing you how this works. Um, so let's play around with this a little bit. So what we're saying now is that these two cisterns um, will generate enough water to be um, Actually, well over since this is 61%, it's going to be 122%. Um, so we'll be definitely be uh, net positive water if we put two uh, cisterns of this size on our in our design. Um, I can change the height here, right, and make them uh, less uh, thinner, or I can make it shorter and make it fatter. Um, I can change the percentage um, of that's a good thing to do. Like so. If I say, actually, oh, I looked at the specs of this particular thing I'm buying, and it's, uh, I, I really am only going to get about 80% of that, um, or actually 70%. You see that that took us um, into needing three cisterns, because we're right now we're only at 48% per cistern. Um, and, you know, in, any of these other variables that we change, um, I could say, no, I actually want to make this cistern collect everything uh, in one cistern. I'm sorry, I don't mean in one cistern. I want it, I want it to collect um, 12 months of rain falling on the site. Uh, so then I would probably want to uh, be collecting the full um, 12 months um, in, uh, of usage, right? So I could, you know, I could attenuate this differently. If I want to collect, uh, I want to be collecting all of the, the, the a full year's worth of um, rain water, um, but I want to, uh, only hold uh, five months of that in a cistern, then that will change the size, right? So now we're up to five cisterns because they're, I'm making them smaller. I only want each cistern holding five months worth, but I want to collect the full years. Um, and this is probably where you should leave it at 12. You know, you want to collect the full five months and the full year 
um, in order to get to net positive. Anyway, that could be confusing, so that's why you should talk to me in class. This is just me trying to introduce this concept and, and give you this script. Um, so what's, what else do we have to do? Well, we need to bake it. So if I, because um, right now this, these are not in Rhino. They're just uh, in Grasshopper. If I right click this, as we've done before, I hit bake. I tell it where I want it to go. So I think I've got a, let me cancel this. I think I've got a, yeah, I've got a cistern layer here. So I'm going to bake. I'm going to put it on the cistern layer. Say OK. There they are. I'm going to turn off the preview. And now these are actual cisterns that I can move. And I could copy and take them to a different, um, a different file. They're just there for me to use. And then if I want to change anything here, uh, you know, like change the type of project, then I'd have to rebake and have a different set of cisterns. So maybe I'd have a different, you know, um, oops, I put the wrong. Let me just, let's just delete these. So I've changed. Um, whatever I did, you know, change, uh, change it to warehouse, um, let's preview it. So now it's two of this size and then I would bake those, you know, so, so you can, you can do multiple versions is what I'm saying. You also don't have to, um, just use a, a, a single, uh, a planar B rep. So for example, I've got some topography in here. I can actually use this as the rain catchment, um, B rep also. And so now this is the, using the site, this would be the cistern size I would need to, to catch the water, or this would be the cistern size that would catch the water from the site. And so you see we have, you know, way more water than we need. So I'm not saying that you would do that. I'm just letting you know that it, uh, there's, you don't have to just use your roof as a collection on uh, surface. Okay, so what, um, let's summarize. I'm going to change this back. Oops. So what have we done? We have um, created a script that takes precipitation from a specific location, uh, determines how much water we can collect, the uh, volume of water we can collect on a given surface, in this case, uh, it being the, the, the uh, roof of the building. Um, then we design a cistern um, that will collect uh, a certain number of months of that, collect, uh, that water collection on the, on, off of the surface. Then we determine how much water our project is going to use, and then we determine how many cisterns of the size we designed we will need to um, get net positive water usage for our project. So you want you need to do this for whatever project you're using this semester, um, and uh, read the assignment uh, instructions to see exactly what I'm asking you to turn in, and ask me questions in class so that we um, go deeper than just punching a couple buttons here. Um, because that's really all you're doing this week if you don't think about it. All right, talk to you in class.